Greetings, I the War Al greets you. This video is to give you an overview of the many different pistols in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. What they are, which should you use, when should you use them, and how do you use them? First, let's start with what pistols are. Pistols take up their own slot in your inventory and you spawn with one, so you should never be without a pistol in Counter-Strike. They are used when you can't afford a primary, when your primary runs out of ammo and you don't have time to reload, as well as situationally. For example, if you have to engage multiple opponents at close range with an AWP, it might make sense to pull out your pistol instead. In general, pistols are weaker than primaries in terms of damage, precision, accuracy, fire rate, armor penetration, all them juicy stats, but there are exceptions as each pistol is fairly unique. You can move quickly with pistols and you don't have as much tagging, so it makes sense when you're using pistols to keep moving. Shooting when you change directions for the accurate shot. First, let's talk about the starting pistols. At the start of every round, if you don't already have a pistol, you're given one for free. There's no handouts in Counter-Strike, it's a skill-based game. Except for that one, where you get the pi Anyway, each team has their own starting pistol. The Glock is arguably the weakest weapon in the game. Its damage is comparable to the Bison, if that puts it in perspective. It fires semi-automatic like every other pistol except the CZ-75 machine pistol. That means you're tap shooting with every pistol. The recoil pattern of the Glock goes side to side to a great extent and slightly upward, but because the crosshair itself bounces upward while firing fast, it actually appears like the rounds are all centered around where the crosshair is. You can use this. You still have to pull down slightly on the mouse when firing fast to adjust, or find that perfect tap fire speed to land accurate shots. When the enemy has armor, it makes sense to use a high rate of fire. You're gonna have to normally land three headshots to take them down. The weapon has terrible armor penetration, so you should always go for headshots with it. To put it in perspective, you need to land a minimum eight chest shots to kill an armored player at point blank range. Against unarmored opponents, the Glock has the ability to one-tap headshot at close and medium distances, making it good enough for the first round in the game. On every other round, when you're going to be saving, meaning you're not going to have a primary, it makes more sense to spend the extra money on a Tech 9 or a P250. If you can't spend that extra $300, good luck. One of the most distinguishing characteristics of the weapon is the burst fire mechanic. I have another video that goes into more detail on the burst fire of the Glock, but briefly, it fires three rounds very quickly. You still need to control for recoil when burst firing. It's slight, but you should practice it to get used to the slight movement. Because the Glock is used on the first round, it goes up against the CT side starting pistols, the USP and the P2000. Both of these weapons are superior to the Glock in terms of long range accuracy and damage, so it makes sense for the terrorists to try to engage in close range on the first round, going for headshots, since players can't purchase a helmet on the first round. You often see these terrorists, you know, bum rushing, got armor and Glock, and they're charging in, trying to engage close range, man, going for them fisticuffs. The next pistols we'll talk about are the USPS and the P2000. These are interchangeable and the choice really comes down to personal preference. The difference is the USPS has a silencer, but one round less in each magazine as well as fewer magazines overall. This is one of the only weapons you're in danger of actually running out of ammo with. The silencer prevents tracer rounds and it's fairly quiet when you shoot it, so it's difficult to tell what direction you're actually getting shot from if the enemy has a silencer. There are some additional, very slight, almost unnoticeable differences in these weapons. The USPS has very slightly better recoil and is slightly less precise at longer distances. I honestly wouldn't worry about these differences and would base my choice based on the magazine capacity and the silencer. These weapons are freakishly precise, especially considering they're free. You can land one accurate shot while moving with them, making them great for entries. They are also much more precise than the Glock at longer distances, meaning you're going to be able to win those long-range engagements easier. And they do more damage, so you have a very good chance at getting a one-tap headshot. Along with the Glock, they don't do as much damage against armored players at all, so you should really go for headshots with these, and consider upgrading to the 5.7 or the P250 on Eco, though they are far more useful than the Glock on eco rounds. If you're using a Glock and you see a P2000 or a USP on the ground, consider picking it up. Our next pistol in line is the P250. It costs 300 and is the cheapest weapon you have to purchase. It is less precise than the free pistols, but does noticeably more damage and has a controllable recoil. Against armored players, it has the ability to one-hit headshot, but that's only like right up, like dodge this Matrix Neo Trinity reference. When I use the P250, I tend to get a 1 and 99 shot on the head because I am incredibly unlucky. Technically, there's no such thing as luck, it's just probability, but you know what I'm saying. 
I find the best way to use it is to engage at close and medium distances and fire four to five shots while controlling for recoil going for the headshot. Recoil is somewhat random in that it starts in an oscillation from side to side, so keep an eye out for which way it starts to go upward and correct for it. Much of using this weapon is predicting where the next shot will land, which is not easy. Also, the reduced magazine capacity of the weapon makes you slightly in danger of running out of ammo with it, although it's very slight considering its use as an eco weapon. If you kill somebody with it, you can probably just take the gun off of the guy you shot in the face. This is the gun you're gonna buy if you're very low on money and you don't want to use a Glock or a USP. At just $200 more, there are better options. This is the true eco pistol. Next, at the $500 price range, we have a number of choices. There's the Tech 9 on the T side and the 5.7 on the CT side, but you can switch out either in your loadout for the CZ-75 Auto. The CZ is a unique pistol for many different reasons. The only benefit of it over any other pistols is that it's automatic. It can unload a large amount of rounds in a short amount of time, making it ideal for close range positions. However, it has terrible accuracy, terrible precision, the spray pattern is random and difficult to control, and at the same time, it isn't very precise when tap shooting. It also is the only pistol that has a lower kill reward of just $100, making it a terrible choice for eco rounds. Think of it this way, you have to get an ace for the weapon to pay for itself. It is terrible in terms of cost efficiency. It also takes a long time to take the weapon out, making it a bad choice in theory as a secondary to the AWP. However, some of the best AWP players in the game do use the CZ as a secondary. It also doesn't have very much ammo, just two mags and 12 rounds apiece. This gives it a very specific niche role. CT side at close range around a corner to steal the enemy's primary weapon. The strength of the CZ is its fire rate, giving it a very high damage per second. You can melt an enemy up close very easily with the CZ. You just spray, pretty much hold down left mouse button and slightly control for the spray pattern. It goes up and a little bit to the right. Most of it's negligible though. You need to be up close and personal for the CZ to be effective, which makes it a viable choice as an alternative to the 5.7 on CT side where it can be used around corners. The 5.7 is an all-around great pistol. It's your middle-of-the-road, jack-of-all-trades pistol that works in just about every situation. You can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with primary weapons at close and medium range. It's the CT side pistol of choice. It has a more controllable spray pattern than the P250. The first two shots are relatively in the center, and then it goes straight upward. It's easy to learn and effective. It also does plenty of damage. You can one-hit headshot at medium and close distances, even against armored opponents. Like all pistols, I suggest going for headshots only. When I use it, I tend to shoot the first two shots directly at the target, then I pull down for a few more shots. Then you reset your accuracy with movement control, rinse and repeat. This is your go-to pistol on CT side if you can afford the $500. It's a great secondary to the op and a perfect choice for armor pistol rounds or rounds where you can't afford a rifle and your team is buying. While it may have some trouble at longer distances compared to the rifles, CT side is where I think you can control the engagements better. I think the 5.7 works best at medium range. Likewise, the Tech 9 on the T side is a beast. It has all the same positives as the 5.7, except the spray pattern is a little bit random when firing quickly. Instead of going up, this one goes like side to side all over the place. It's, it's insane. It seems to shoot randomly, kind of like a Glock. It also doesn't have the best tap shooting potential, but it makes up for it with its damage. This thing is a one hit headshot, except at long range. You want to engage closer with the Tech 9. Since it's on the T side, it isn't always possible to do that. So this is the weapon of choice primarily for armor pistol pushes when you gotta just charge into a bomb site. Sort of similar to how a terrorist side team will swarm a site with Glocks, forcing the engagements to happen up close. With proper smoke usage, the Tech 9 is a force to be reckoned with. The other $500 pistol, or pistols, your last choice here, are pretty much the ugly redheaded stepchildren of the secondary family, the Dooleys. The dual Berettas falter with their lack of armor penetration, making it pointless to purchase after the first round. Where the 5.7 and the Tech 9 are one-hit headshots, the dual Berettas just, they do a fraction of that damage. If you want to leverage them for the fast rate of fire, just use the CZ. The spray pattern is actually not bad with the dualies. It's just the damage aspect that makes it kind of pointless. While some players will use them the first round, I recommend saving your money for nades or armor. I'd use them over the Glock, the USP, the P2000, even the P250, but at the end of the day, there's just better alternatives at $500. If you do happen to find some on the ground, they're good as a spray weapon. Generally, the idea is to move around and shoot them as fast as you can while controlling for recoil, which isn't as bad as the other pistols. We now move on to our last pistol, the big papa of secondaries, 
the Desert Eagle, the Deagle. This thing is an iconic Counter-Strike weapon, the Hand Cannon. It's a big, bulky, difficult to use monster of a pistol and expensive, coming in at $700. It does a ridiculous amount of damage and is insanely accurate. It can land a one-hit accurate headshot at long distance. If you fire the weapon too quickly, it's impossible to control. You can tap shoot at a moderate speed to land accurate shots and add movement control to land accurate shots when you change direction, this weapon probably has the highest skill ceiling of any weapon in the game. This makes it a massive risk reward, and the perfect choice for highly accurate players. The Deagle evens the playing field. It's best used against full buying players. Someone who spends $5,000 on their equipment can be put to ruin in a single shot. If you want to use this weapon, be prepared to invest a lot of time in learning it, because you gotta be perfect. It's best used when holding angles at any distance, waiting for the enemy to push. It's also really good for a single corner peek shot, you know, strafing out, shooting one accurate shot when you change directions to strafe back behind cover. It can also be used to two shot kill to the stomach and even the chest and arms at close and medium range. I like to call it the hand scout because of that. It's a one hit headshot at any distance. Also, you can do the two shots to the body. So if you miss a headshot, but you hit the chest, go for the stomach shot to finish them off. If someone gets too close to you, because of the issue with the recoil, it actually makes sense to full on spray the weapon and go for body shots. Nothing, nothing is more satisfying in Counter-Strike than picking an AWPer with the Deagle. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something. I've been playing Counter-Strike for over 15 years and I learned a few things making this video. I'm the War Al, and I still have no closer.